It's problem solving time. Let's take a look. A square has sides of 12 units. Squares then of x plus 1 by x plus 1 units are cut out of each corner and then the sides are folded up to create an open box. Express the volume of the box then as a function in terms of x. Don't you love these problems? They're really not bad, okay? All we need to do at the start is to visualize, all right? So we wanna create a square. It says that we have a square, so take it piece by piece and just begin to visualize the problem. So we have a square, and it says the sides of that square are gonna be 12 units, right? So I know that the measure from that point, let's say all the way down to, I'll make that a little longer, all the way down to that point, right, will represent now 12 units of length, okay? And the same thing will be then everywhere. Remember, this will represent 12, right? And the same thing, etc. blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now it says, so that takes care of the first sentence, right? Just take it piece by piece. I know sometimes word problems are intimidating because you're looking at it and like, oh my God, they gave me 17 sentences. How am I going to do this? Well, just like any other long problem, you take it one step at a time. You take it one sentence at a time. All right. So a square has sides of 12 units. You draw that. You represent it. You think about it. Then squares of x plus 1 by x plus 1 units are cut out of each corner. Now I know that's going to be like, oh no, okay, I understand the first sentence, but the second sentence now, come on. Again, take your time. You're cutting out squares in each corner. Okay, so envision the problem. I find a lot of times people at the start, they don't, they read it, but they don't like envision the problem, put themselves in it. Okay, you want to actually imagine you're cutting out a corners. Okay, so what would you now be doing? You would go to this corner, right, and cut out a square. Okay, you would cut out this square. So what is the now length, or what is the measure of this square? What are the units of each side of that square? Well, I told you, x plus 1. Now, I know that feels strange, because it's like x plus 1, but I need a number. Well, we don't need a number. We need an expression. That's really what we need. So this is x minus 1, oh, plus 1. Well, I almost screwed up the problem, right? x plus 1 as I'm talking. See, I can't, e I can't even multitask. So x plus 1 uh, on both sides of that square. Now, are you going to do it just to the left side? No, you're also going to do it to the right side. Okay, so you draw that and you do x plus 1. Okay, that's great. This is going to be x plus 1. Okay, that's great. You're going to then do it to the bottom, right? And you're like, okay, this is great. Let's get on with this. X plus 1. I know, I know, I know. And then here. We're going to do it down here. All right. Hopefully you're having a good school year so far. All right. And hopefully these videos are making your life a little bit easier. Now, we have now these uh, squares cut out. Okay. And if you wanted, you can start erasing this to maybe help you visualize it a little more. Okay. You don't have to. All right. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I, I will start erasing it at the end. Okay. All right. So we got those squares cut out. Great. So that took care of now the second sentence, right? Uh, almost, well, I should say the first half, right? So it says a cut out of each corner. That's great. Then it says, then express, uh, excuse me, then these sides are folded up to create an open box. So from here, how would you start to fold up the sides? Now, if you have trouble visualizing this, I suggest you literally take out a piece of paper. Start cutting out. If you don't have a scissor, don't say I can't do it. Tear it out, right? There should be a piece of paper somewhere. So now, or if you don't have one, just use your computer. Start tearing out corners, you know, cutting out corners of the computer. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Um, so what we now would do is we would now start to fold, okay? And crease, let's say, that line we would now crease that line. We would then crease that line, and then we would crease this line, okay? And what would now start to happen is we would begin to fold these sides on up, okay? So now to help visualize it, now I'm gonna start erasing, I think, all right? And maybe we'll start to be able to visually see it. Again, if you have trouble with this, just do it on a piece of paper if you can, if you have one available, all right? So now you might be able to start visualizing this where it's like, oh, wait a minute, I can take now this area and flip it on up, 
right? You're going to fold it at this line. And then you're going to do the same thing for this area. You're going to flip that on up, right? You're going to flip this on up, and then you're going to flip this on up. And you might already begin to see how that's going to form an open box, okay? How it's going to form an open box. Now, to make this a little neater, I'm going to bring in these x plus 1s because we cut out squares, right? So those lengths are still x plus 1. That doesn't make a difference, right? So I'm going to bring in those x plus 1s, all right? And then what now I'm going to do is draw the box that's going to be created, okay? Take a look. Bam. So there's your box, right? Now, the goal is, now let's look at the last sentence. It says now, so we took care of the first two sentences, right? So hopefully that's not too hard. Then the last sentence says, express the volume of the box. So now you have to know how do you find or what's the formula for the volume of a box? Well, you might say, volume of a box? I don't know. I know the volume of a rectangular prism. I know this, right? Well, it's just, it's just the volume of a rectangular prism. I mean, that's all it is, right? That's all it is. So what is the volume there? It's simply going to be the length times the width times the height. What happened there? Not really sure. But length times the width times the height. Okay? So that means I need to know the length of the box, the width of the box, and the height of the box. Okay? How am I going to find it? Well, you got to go back to this picture to help you out. Okay? Now you have to envision this. The length of the box would basically be equal to this length right here. Now, it doesn't really matter your perspective here. I'm just trying to say this would have been the front of the box if you folded it up, right? And then you start to look at it. But it doesn't really matter. This is a square. so. But this would have been the length now. This blue line would have been the length of the front of the box. So this length right here. Okay? What is that length? What is the length? You might say, I don't know. Well, let's take a look at what we do know. We know that the overall length, so from this black line, right, from this point all the way down to that point, how long was that? Remember, it's a square, so each side is 12, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this up a tad, okay? Move that up a tad. So this is 12, okay? So if you know that length is 12, now imagine you cut out, uh, you know, a length of two <coughs> units here. And the length of two units here. Forget that it says x plus one or whatever. So if you cut out a length of two units on both sides, what would be now the blue length here? What do you think? Well, you probably say, well, if it's 12 overall, now I chop off two over here and I chop off two over here. The remaining part now in the middle is going to be eight. And yeah, that's exactly what it would be, right? So what's interesting is that it comes so easily to you when you use numbers, but now when you have an expression, it's like, oh, I'm genius. What am I going to do? You're going to do the same thing just without a number. It's the same logic though, right? What did you do? You took the overall length of 12. So it would be 12. Minus then you said, I'm going to subtract this side from it. So you're going to subtract then that x plus one term, whatever that is. And then you're going to subtract this, right? x plus one term. That's what you're going to do, right? That would, this would then represent the length of the blue line. Okay. So that's the length. Now, so this length here, instead of writing L, I'm going to write now the 12 minus x plus 1 minus then, oh, well, no, 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 minus x, not multiplied, x plus 1, okay? Now you can start to simplify this if you want. You know, you can distribute the negative sign to each of the x's and bada bing, bada boom. So you'd have now 12 minus then 2x minus 2, okay? And then from here, you can combine some like terms if you want. 12 minus 2 would be 10, so it's 10 minus 2x. Okay, you can factor this if you want it. I don't know why you would, but you can factor that if you want it. Okay, now, that's the length now. That's the length of the box. Good? Now, to speed this up a little bit, because it was a square, so the base has to be a square now, if the length we know of this was 10 minus 2x, then what do you think this width has to be? Well, that also has to be 10 minus 2x. So that's going to be also 10 minus 2x. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the little w there, and that's going to be now 10 minus my 2x. Okay? Now, what about the height? What is the height? Well, think about this. Again, go back if you're like, I don't know what it's going to be. Envision the problem. Okay? Envision it. Think about it. Put yourself in the problem. Okay? It's fun to dream about the problem. All right? 
The mind is a powerful tool. Don't let it go to waste. Use it. So if you were to think about now folding this area up, if that area goes up, right, you can imagine this happening where the this now side right here that I'm drawing that I'm highlighting essentially, or let me actually highlight it, this side that I'm highlighting, okay, would be now, let's say this piece on over here. Okay. The question now is, how high did it go? What's that? No, how high did it go? Right? Because that height is the same as that height, right? Etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's the same as this height, right? It's the same as that height. So what do you think? Well, that looks like this piece right here to me, right? If you were to fold it up, try to envision that. Okay. And if that's the length of that height, well, it's also length over here, right? It doesn't really make a difference. So now I know this piece and that's going to be x plus 1. Now you have everything you need in order to create your volume equation. So the volume here is going to be the length, which is 10 minus 2x. Then it's going to be the width, 10 minus 2x. And then it's going to be the height of x, x plus 1. Okay, all multiplied together. Now you can simplify this a little bit if you wanted. You could do, you can, I don't know what you need from here. This is technically an answer. Okay, but I have no clue how you might need the formula now presented, right? You might have to foil this to create the cubic. Don't really know. Don't really know. You can write it like this then. You can square this term if you want it and then just write the x plus 1. I have no clue. All I know is that this will be, <laughs> this is a valid formula, but whether you need it in, you know, factored form here or whether you want it in the standard form, I, you know, that, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Not I, not I. So, guys, I hope this makes sense. And now you can plug in, the beautiful part about this is now you can plug in any value for x, and you'd be able to simply find the volume of the box. Okay? Now I know you're like, well, what is the use of this? Well, I mean, obviously, you, you know, are you going to be creating boxes, uh, you know, for a living and uh, having to, you know, figure out the volumes? No, no, not exactly. But the whole point of this you know, process is to have you become a good problem solver and using the tools of math to help you solve problems. And there are many real world problems out there that have been solved with math, okay? Without good problem solvers out there and using mathematics, we wouldn't have anywhere near the technology we have today. All right, so it might not be, you might say, when am I ever gonna fold up a box and need to calculate the volume of it? You're never gonna need that most likely. Unless you're trying to optimize the volume of a box, which you need a little calculus for, to find out, ooh, maybe what could give me the largest volume with the smallest surface area so that I can save on costs for my shipping purposes, right? I, you know, it has implications for things, just not directly. So don't consider like, when am I ever gonna use this stuff? You'd be surprised, you would be surprised, okay? If you actually learn it, and you think about it, you can use a lot of these tools and techniques in a lot of areas of your life. And you might say, I'm not going to go into business. I'm not going to, it doesn't matter. Okay. You might be doing work on a house one day or do, you know, you don't really know what you're going to be doing in the future, potentially. <laughs> if I think back to my history and thinking about, oh yeah, I was going to start in this field. I'm totally in a different area, right? You don't know where life is going to take you. And that's actually part of the fun. All right, so strap on your seatbelt, enjoy the ride, and let me help you through. I'll see you soon.